Hello, everyone, and welcome to this exciting conversation with Metronome Director Alexandru Belk and actress Mara Bugarin. Um, thank you, Alexandra and Mara, for taking the time to be with us today, even if it's uh, almost bedtime in Romania. And I know that you've been on the road, if I understand, presenting the movie um, um, all over Romania. Um, we're excited that we're able to actually show Metronome in Seattle. We we uh, showed Metronome in Seattle twice at the Northwest Film Forum and in the Phoenix area at Majestic Theater, almost if not at the same time with the movie being presented in uh, Romanian theaters. This event is part of a Q&A series organized with the occasion of the Romanian Film Festival Seattle this year in its ninth edition and the Romanian Film Festival Arizona in its second edition. Just as a reminder, both festivals are hybrid and ongoing. While in-theater screenings are over, the virtual festival continues through November 27. For those of you who missed or weren't able to attend the screenings in person in Seattle or Phoenix, Metronome um, unfortunately, is not available during our festival online. So stay in touch um, as we are going to try to find out the release date for the US. Um, as you might already know, Metronome was awarded the, director, the directing prize in Cannes and, and Certain Regards section. And this is um, Alexandru Bell's debut feature. It's also Mara Bulgarin's debut film. Um, our conversation with Alexandru Belk and Mara Bugarin will be moderated today by Robert Horton, Seattle-based film critic and member of the National Society of Film Critics. Thank you, Robert, for accepting this role uh, for us today. Um, I'll give you the microphone in a minute, but I only want to mention that the way we've envisioned this uh, is, a, is a 35 to 40 minutes conversation between you and our two guests. And then um, I think um, our uh, audience members would also like to um, ask some questions so we can open it up to, uh, to the public. And we invite the people in the audience today to use both the microphone when the time comes and the chat to ask questions, make comments and share their thoughts thoughts and, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much again for uh, to both of our guests and to Robert Horton for moderating. Thank you for asking me to to moderate uh, in the in the Romanian Film Festival. I was, was really pleased uh, to to see this uh, what I thought is a very, very beautiful film. And uh, I, ho I hope that everyone else has seen the film as well. And I will definitely um, not um, ask too many questions, uh, allow other people to, to get in here and, and talk. Um, I'll just start with the, the, the most basic kind of question for Alexandru, which is that this you actually had made documentary films before uh, making this film. And if, if I'm right, you, you started with the, the impetus for this idea was another documentary, but it became a, a narrative feature. Is that right? And, and how did, how did how and why did you shift from the, the documentary to the narrative form? Uh, it's uh, an interesting question and uh, it, I don't have an, I don't know, a, a, a proper answer, but I wanted to make a documentary in the beginning. I wanted to make a documentary about uh, Radio uh, Free Europe and uh, about uh, Red, uh, Cornel Kiriak, uh, the radio host uh, show Metronome. And then I uh, read uh, his uh, secret uh, police securitate file. And uh, in there, I discovered uh, uh, some mentions about uh, teenagers getting together in small apartments, listening to uh, his show, listening to Western music, listening to rock music, progressive rock. And uh, I conducted some interviews with uh, these um, people that were mentioned in these secret uh, files. And talking with them, I realized that I'm not gonna be able somehow to make a documentary about that. I wanted to make a documentary more about the people that were listening to his show and not the radio show itself. So I decided somehow to tell this story about this generation of, uh, let's say my parents' generation. 
And then I decided somehow, but I don't know when this happened, this switch, to write a feature film, to write a script for a feature film, yeah. Uh, I, I thought back then that, uh, I don't know, the form of the film, the language, language should serve the idea and the theme and yeah i thought that uh, a, a fiction film uh, I don't know, could serve better this idea that i had uh, in mind at that time yeah it's it was it uh, challenging or tricky to blend what the what the film has uh, in abundance which is a, a sort of a mixture of um the intimate and the personal with a larger political situation which is which is dominating the, the lives of of the characters it was challenging because it i came from the documentary field and i had to invent uh, the characters i had to invent their background to build a narrative arch uh, and um, to make them a little bit political, but not so much. And I was focusing on finding the universal story, the universal language to share, uh, to share the, the story, yeah. So it was difficult in the beginning, but uh, yeah, I don't know, not so difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, during my, uh, uh, during the shooting, I was working somehow, like uh, I was working on my documentaries. Even if I was working with actors, I was talking with them. I was, I don't know, I was uh, trying, I tried to uh, get them in the mood, in the times, in the period. And somehow I didn't get this feeling that I'm doing a feature film like yeah it was like a mixture of things yeah hmm yeah well maybe uh mara could you talk about that a little bit because that, that's that uh, feeling of having the actors you know also participate maybe in an almost a documentary like uh process did you find that to be the the case as well hi to everyone hi. um Yes, you could, you could feel the fact that Alex comes from documentaries because his work was very much based in uh, we as people, in us with our own experiences as almost uh, teenagers, so to say. And he tried to build the Anna's character because I can speak uh, best about her in in a strong connection with me, Mara, and my political views, sort of, and my beliefs as a person. And I think, and Alex told me that many times, he casted me because he had this feeling that I could bring something to Anna. And that is sort of a very documentary-like way of thinking, because many directors tend to put the actor in a sort of little box, and the box is very well uh, designed. <laughs> You don't get space to design it yourself. Did you, can you, were there anything like um, even getting into the culture of the 70s? Like, were you listening to music or reading yeah. things or I don't know, that sort of thing? Um, I am very much a history nerd and I didn't leave the 70s, but I listened to the music. I listened to it quite a lot. I'm, I'm not so big on contemporary music, so to say. So I could understand the importance of The Doors and Janis Joplin and Beatles and everything. And um, about documentation, I was lucky enough to work in a theater project a few months before about three women in communist Romania, three generations of women. And I read about, uh, about them and about the female position in the regime and oppression and the Securitate, the secret police and everything. So I had done my research sort of before, actually being casted in Metronome. And afterwards on set, I really needed to get to know what Cornel Kiriak meant and uh, Radio Free Europe and everything. But with that, I had Alex with me and he was uh, kind enough <laughs> and 
uh, generous enough to answer me all the questions I had. Yeah, well, did, you know, um, Alexandra, you said something that made me think uh, of a question, which is you, you found some of the people who had actually lived through these things because you saw their files and so on. Did, did, have they seen the film then uh, afterwards? Or did they have, what, what was their reaction to the film if they have seen it? Yeah, yeah, they seen it. They seen it already and they were really happy with the movie. And at every q and I've gotten now, uh, I always had a lady, let's say, in the audience that told me in the end, after the move, in the end, during the QA, that she lived like a similar story and she can relate really well with Anna's character because it's somehow her story. And I've got this, um, those testimonies in Romania, all over the country. I've got it in Germany, I've got it in France, I've got it in uh, Los Angeles, I've got it. Uh, uh, in um, in Chicago, all over the place, I met a Romanian lady that uh, she was somehow really, really, uh, yeah, into this. She was like a really. She related really well with the character and the story, and she could feel that. It's her own story. And also for the people that I uh, work with uh, during my research and so on, I invited them to the Romanian premiere and I talked with them after. And uh, they, they were really happy that the story is like this, that I wasn't judging the characters, that I had this like this distance and I wasn't putting fingers in. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is a, one of the interesting things about the film is that you you do kind of allow the audience to decide, you know, what we think about what the characters are doing, and um, that takes a certain amount of nerve because it's it's easy to lecture, I guess, maybe in films, especially when you're talking about the history of a country in a way. Um, was that is that something that you had from the very beginning of this process that you wanted to let the audience, you know, decide? Yeah, I want it from the very beginning because I knew that I'm doing a film about a period of time that I haven't lived. And also being, uh, we know how history ended. We know the, I don't know, the conclusions. And I want to use this uh, relaxation, let's say detachment that I have, not living those times to uh, in my advantage to tell this story like in a more relaxed way not to I don't know push all the buttons and to be like uh, I don't know but yeah it was uh, my intention from the very beginning do you have any thoughts about you know I don't know if you can generalize like this but but Romanian culture and and what its attitude is toward rethinking this era Looking back at this time, sifting through it, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. I talked with some people, and now for them, I mean, people that live uh, those times, and for them, their memories are the truth, the history, and it's not like for everyone their personal memories are, uh, I don't know, the real history. So I checked uh, with them this story and I get these uh, reactions from some guys or uh, that they told me that, uh, no, it was much uh, worse back then. And uh, you should, I don't know, maybe you read my file, my secret police files to see what was in there. And uh, maybe, I don't know, you should uh, done something like, I don't know, on bigger, I don't know, proportions or I don't know. But... Um, 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Somehow it's interesting to see how they relate to the past today. But for me, it's much more interesting to see how the young generation is, uh, how they are relating to the film and to the past, because I'm showing them the film and then I'm talking with them and I'm more curious in, in their reaction. Mm. Well, maybe, maybe uh, Mara, could you speak to that a little bit? Like, um, you know, not that you're a representative of your entire generation, but uh, maybe do you have a feeling about how people your age are, are taking this film or, or just thinking about the past that they didn't live through at all? I actually thought about it quite a lot this, uh, this last month because shooting the movie, it had changed me because I became much more aware of the liberty and of, of what freedom I think means and how it could, I think I sort of induced myself some paranoia whilst shooting the movie and <laughs> it lived on with me for a while afterwards. And so, uh, yeah, for the young generation, I think they can be a bit detached from the issue. And a word I would, I would connect to, to the generation in Romania, at least the young generation, is for, for most of them, the privilege of living in a very okay country without war, without very much problems. I mean, the upper classes of our country. And they don't really want to think about what had happened before. They sort of are um, a bit full with the communist talk up to this point, because it has, it has been a topic in movies in Romania a lot. And I think most of them won't come to the movie because they don't want to see another communist movie. And when they do come to the movie, they're very impressed because they say, oh my God, it's a, it's a movie with music, with music we actually listen to, with a, with a party, with, with a group of people, with this, this girl and she's very beautiful and she's an icon blah, blah, blah. and they say all this beautiful stuff to us. And then they conclude by saying, and it wasn't gray at all. We, uh, we expected it to be a gray movie with people eating soup at the table. <laughs> And yeah, it's it's not that it's quite dynamic, and um, I think it it, it uh, raises awareness up to a certain extent, as much as a movie can do for for young people if they go to cinema, of course. Mm -hmm. And and Alexandru, would you say that the uh, your your goal was to raise awareness like this, not just with young people, but you know, with with anybody? Yeah, in a way, in a way, and uh, maybe this, uh, I will continue what uh, Mara said, uh, maybe this is happening because this is actually, it's not a film about communism, it's a film about present, it's a film about uh, where we are today, and maybe why we are here today, and maybe it's a film, like you said, uh, that is raising some awareness, uh, uh, a film that makes you feel think that uh, today we are living in I don't know in a, a thin red line. Here is freedom. Here is uh, I don't know something different, and uh, this freedom uh, we can lose it uh, very easy. And I wanted to to raise this uh, awareness. Yeah. It was really important for me, this theme, this uh, theme, this uh, freedom uh, theme. Yeah, and the threat to freedom as well, yeah. Yeah, because this is happening today, this is happening yes. today. Yeah. We, are, we have a crane in the northern border we have i don't know extreme right wings uh, parties that are winning elections all over the world so yeah 
I want to uh, just before I'm um, asking other other people to to please jump in. I do want to ask one question that kind of follows up on what Mara was saying about the film. It's not gray, you know that that <laughs> some people are reacting. And to me, the um, I just want to ask you. Maybe it's a technical question, although I think it's an artistic question. And that is that there are a lot of films that you see now, and and maybe they're shot digitally or something, and they're very um, they're very crisp looking and cold kind of looking very sharp this film visually is very warm it it it, it, re, it looks like you could be watching a film that was shot in the 70s um it has color you know and, and so on um and i wondered how you how you did that <laughs> you know how, how you avoided that kind of digital coldness that can come in sometimes um yeah that's i guess that's the question yeah we struggled a lot we wanted to make a, a... Uh, in the beginning, we wanted to uh, shoot on uh, film, and then we decided to shoot on digital, and uh, we wanted to achieve this academic look of the movies from the 70s, and uh, we used like the latest uh, digital technology, and also we use some vintage uh, lenses like reissued of some vintage lenses from the 60s. And in post-production, we used a lot of, I don't know, grain and effects like, uh, I don't know, to make everything smooth. Uh, and we worked a lot to achieve this uh, 70s look. And we also work with a palette of colors that, uh, our DOP, Tudor Panduru, choose. And uh, we shared this uh, palette of uh, colors to all the departments, to the uh, scenography, to costumes, to everyone, just to be able to, I don't know, to not get out of that, uh, of that uh, color and mood. So yeah, it's a not so colorful, but it's not gray. It's like more of, <laughs> of a vintage 70s uh, look. So yeah, as close as we could be to the film stock, to the 35 millimeter uh, film. Yeah, so can you, can you say what some of those colors were? Like, like what, your, what your palette was that you were requesting? It was something like uh, brown, uh, kind of bluish, magenta, purple. Um, a lot yeah. of blue. It yeah, was a lot, a lot of, of blue, blue also. Yeah. They made yeah, me yeah. do a photo with the palette thingy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blue, magenta, brown, purple, mm -hmm. a yellowish, more to orange in that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it reminded me of the 70s because I do remember the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, well, let's, I have plenty of other questions, but let's just pause and see if um, someone else would like to join the conversation. Um, and they think they can either, they can push the button to raise their hand or really you can just uh, unmute yourself, I suppose. There's, uh, yeah, Ma Marius, do you want to unmute? All right. So uh, thank you, uh, Robert. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm in Chicago, and uh, I was not able to attend the movie uh, in person, but I was lucky enough to to see it at the Chicago International Movie Festival, and I take this opportunity to congratulate Alexandru Belk for uh, this outstanding movie, but also for the way he handled in Chicago the Q&A session, including the famous by now lady who relieved her youth uh, for more than 10 minutes and told us how that relates to her experience. So great job overall. Thank My you. question though is to Mara Bugarin. Um, of course, the, the name of the movie and the theme means different things to different people. To me, it was this oscillation of that the metronome goes through from various states. And in the case of Anna, the, the character that you portrayed so well, it went from a fragile moment and tender moment, loving moments, to 
really situations when Anna was displayed extraordinary strength. And a couple of these moments were with uh, Anna's father, uh, Mihai Kalin, portrayed that, and then with the captain, and that was Vlad, Vlad Ivanov. And those of you who know Mihai Kalin and Vlad Ivanov can imagine how it's not that hard to be tough with Mihai Kalin, but it's an extraordinary achievement to stand your ground in front of uh, Vlad Ivanov. So the question is, how was the interaction with these actors? Uh, how did you perceive them? Were they kind people? Any good or bad things about them? Um, they are, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for seeing the movie and thank you for the kind words. They are amazing, amazing people and amazing actors as well. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to shoot with them as much as I would like. I shot two days with Vlad Ivanov and two days with Mihai Kalin. So everything was kind of rushed and we had to get things done. I couldn't start to fantasize and to be a big fan of them. Uh, but uh, they helped me as much as they could. And it was amazing for me to see the precision with... Uh, with which they they constructed and they detailed their performance and how they redid it the same over and over and over again. I lost you. It moved here. Here you are. And uh, it was an acting lesson for me. And a point in my career, I wouldn't have thought I would uh, actually got to achieve by twenty years old. Yeah, I, I was very grateful for everything. And they were very hard sequences in the in the storyline and for Anna's character because it was sort of the breaking point, but it has it had to be a contained breaking point. So everything was on my inside and had to actually be felt because Alex, for Alex, that was very important that everything was vulnerability and sadness and fear, but not played not played emotions, actual emotions. And uh, they helped me with that because they were very powerful in their performances. And it sort of reflected upon me. Thank you and congratulations again for an outstanding performance. Thank you. I was just wondering uh, in a follow-up question to both Mara and um, Alexandru, why, why is it important that um, that the character uh, you know, have that containment, you know, and, and not not break out and, and so on. It's very powerful. It's, it's, it's so so effective. But why why did you think that was important? Mama? Alex, you want to go? <laughs> no, or do you want me do. to say? Please do. Um, all right. So first of all, it was very different. With what, with what you would expect, especially at the secret police part, because there you would expect people to be crying and screaming and all these explosive emotions going on. And I felt them, but uh, I think it was about the period of time because in, in the sort of oppression the, co the communist regime has laid upon people, they had to, I think they were scared to express themselves as much. And we tried to portray that in Anna the way that she felt things at a very high intensity, but she didn't allow herself to actually show them. And everything that was showed as an emotion was sort of a rupture of the mask she tries to build for herself, a mask for protection. And she has vulner vulnerability with her father and with uh, Sorin a bit in the first sequence. But otherwise, she tries to be strong and so on. I don't know. I think she's she's scared to show herself, to show her pain. Alexandra, do you, I, I don't think you can say it better than that, but Alexandra, do you want to say <laughs> anything else about that? When I uh, uh, wrote the first draft, the Securitate, Secret Police uh, investigation was something like uh, depicted from uh, Western uh, movies <laughs> with a table, with a light, and that was everything in there. And when I uh, 
done my research uh, properly. I discovered that it wasn't like that. And uh, I discovered that the colonels, uh, they were really smart and they were really like, they did like a law school and they knew the manipulation techniques and they were like, they, they weren't the same as the guys that used to be in the 50s late 50s so this was a new kind of uh, securitate inquiry and then i thought okay if they are smart and if they know all these techniques of manipulation why my character wouldn't be i don't know facing them in the same manner and i I, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with what Mara said, and I'm coming with this information. Yeah, after, yeah. But yeah, yeah it's. I, I was just going to say that something that Mara said reminded me um, of, of people controlling themselves when. So I, I got to go to uh, Romania on a. a the Fulbright Specialist Grant in 2016, thanks to our uh, friends in Seattle uh, with this film festival. And one of the people I talked to, um, a professor in Yash, I think it was, told me that the, the life, she described it as having one life inside your house and talking freely with your family. And then when you went out the door, you had a different face and a, and a different way of operating. Um, I don't know if that's what yeah, that's that what Mara said reminded me of that comment. It was exactly like this. It was exactly like this. They used to live uh, dual uh, lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Does anyone else have a? Would anyone else like to have a question aired? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Mircha here from Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm curious because I see this is the first film of Mara. I'm curious, Alexander and Mara can can chime in also. How did you discover her? How was the casting process? How many candidates for this role you had? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, so. Yeah, I'll start. Um, I discovered Mara, uh, let's say four, five days before shooting. I had uh, other actors in my mind. And then we started the, the, yeah, the rehearsal, the general, general rehearsal. And uh, I decided that um, going to look for other actors and I already I already saw some um, Mara's uh, casting uh, uh, I don't know the word uh, casting probe casting uh, <laughs> casting tapes yeah yeah, yeah tapes for, <laughs> for another, another movie for another movie and I decided that I'm going to ask her to come for an audition, but on the set this time, not uh, like in an office. And uh, for Sorin, I already, he already, um, he, yeah, I already had uh, him in mind for another role, but uh, uh, he's seen, I don't know, have gone and uh, I forgot about him. And uh, for the other girl, uh, Roxana, she, uh, she, uh, yeah, she, I wanted her for another role. And then I, uh, when I casted uh, Mara and Sorin, I moved her to, to this part. So yeah, from my point, uh, this is my uh, perspective. And I let uh, Mara say his, uh, her uh, input, yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, it was quite a surprise 
because when you actually audition for a movie, you get a few months before you shoot. And uh, I was called on a Thursday, I think, the week before shooting at almost midnight by the casting director. And he, he told me, we're shooting this movie about communist Romania, a love story, this girl, she's the main character. And I was like, yeah, great, I'll come, send me the script, I'll come, when? Tomorrow morning. Uh, okay, and when will we start shooting? Uh, Monday. <laughs> and I said, okay, but can you give me the script? I need to prepare, I was very anxious. I didn't wanna go unprepared to this uh, surprise, amazing opportunity casting. And I went and Alex hit me up with a big sequence with two monologues. He really wanted to test my acting and uh, I was very scared and he didn't wanna give us too much context because he wanted to see the authenticity in us. And we started, it was me and Sherban, my, my co-worker actor who plays Sorin. And uh, we just tried our best. It helped us because we were on set already and we had the furniture and everything that we could rely on to sort of build our imagination a bit up. And um, yeah, then Alex gave us another sequence. We did that again. It lasted for like two and a half hours. It was very long. And Tudor Panduro, the director of picture was there too. And the first AD was there and yeah, they liked us. That, that we could see on set that they liked us. And a few hours later, we got the phone call saying, can you come tomorrow for, for a haircut and the costume fitting? And I was like, yeah, I'll come, thanks God. And that was it. So you say you are 20 years old, Mara, right? I'm 21 now. 21. Uh, yeah. do, you go, do you go to a film school, maybe you not at sea, or uh, yes. How, yes how, did you, how did you get into acting, into this passion of acting? Did you act I before, was, maybe in some, I don't know, commercials or something like that? Uh, yes, I, I started acting when I was 10 oh. in theater at the German State Theater in Timisoara. I'm actually from Timisoara, that's in the western part of the country. And I moved to Bucharest when I was 18. And um, I got a leading part in that theater play, uh, theater play directed by Nikki Volz. He was uh, a professor at Columbia University for, for many years. And he directed this play in Timisoara. And there the story was sort of the same with Metronome. One, one week before we started rehearsing, I got called in for the audition. I accepted, they casted me, I was 10 years old. We started rehearsing 12 hours a day. We had the premiere, we toured with it through Europe. And uh, yeah, then I collaborated with the theater for, for many years, seven, seven, eight years. And then I got into school in Bucharest and started doing movies. And now I sort of switched on to movies <laughs> by chance or I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Have you made another film since then, uh, Mara? Yeah, I actually shot a, a pilot for a Netflix series that will air next year. And I have three more movies to shoot this year, 2023. So yeah, you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing a, lot, a lot of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, who else would like to ask a question? I think we have more time, don't we, to have a a couple of questions. Uh, I would like to ask a question and make a comment as well. If that's okay. Yes. Uh, first of all, I pretty much in real life met all of the characters in your movie, so I think it was for my from my perspective it was pretty authentic, and I also enjoyed the ride in the nice uh, police uh, a minivan. So brought back a lot of memories. But mm -hmm. my question is actually more. Um, Technical, I'm just curious how much you guys rehearsed before you shot and wh what was your shooting ratio? Like how many takes you had per in your scenes? Because you obviously you had some really long sequences that were had to be choreographed. Yeah, 
Uh, we were shooting in continuity until some point, and we were taking like um, 25, 20, let's say around 25 takes. And we were re rehearsing like uh, 10, 10 takes, like 10 times before the the actual actual shooting so uh, yeah and there 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 were some hard scenes to achieve and then we rehearse a lot and we also had like uh, some i don't know scenes where we we thought that they will be hard but we were like you know, have it in uh, after three or four takes but uh, let's say it's like this 25 uh, takes for um, and to and achieve how many, uh, how many days did you guys shoot for uh, we had like uh, rest? yeah we had like 24 i think 24 days we shoot only in bucharest we let all the exteriors for the uh, for the uh, for the ending of the shootings and um, that's why i told you that we were shooting in continuity until some point because we left uh, these exteriors uh, for uh, for the for uh, the yeah for the end of the shooting so yeah we were lucky because uh, we had uh, like great great weather outside because it was raining all the time except when we, we were shooting so yeah yeah because because this is a serious movie let's say what was the funniest moment you had on the set of i i don't know mara <laughs> If, if you had any funny movie, uh, funny moments on the set. <laughs> we never could... have fun. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh. Uh, we had we had a lot of fun. You can you can imagine. I think uh, when we shot the group sequence uh, sequences, there there that was that was quite fun because we were I don't know like twenty year old ten of us in an apartment listening to the Doors and being asked to dance. And kiss and I don't know, laugh. And maybe you that ask was fun. You, maybe you ask yourself, okay, how how did people in the seventies dance on these movies? <laughs> on yes, these we movies? asked. We asked ourselves when we first heard we have to dance. We were, we were like really not okay. We danced like we do now in clubs, and that wasn't good. Like very yeah. erotic <laughs> moves. <laughs> And we had this choreographer named Paul Dunka, who was great. And he and Alex showed us archive, archive footage of people dancing in the 70s. And he said, okay, you dance like this, you dance like that. And uh, he told me, I think that's, that's quite a funny fact. He told me, you have to be a Mathurman, um, a Mathurman with your hand, with your hands the Paul Dunka choreographer and I was like okay sure I'll do that and uh, it was it was fun because when we start before we started the uh, shooting the sequences Paul started yelling at us go 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 kids you you're great you're great and that was very cute and we had a lot of fun but after 10 hours of dancing uh, it got hard a bit a bit <laughs> The fun was gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the fun always there, but the energy was a bit down. I think, Marius, do you have one more? Uh, you have another comment? Uh, I do have a question for uh, Alexandre Bell. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you use the Academy format to remind the viewers of the 35 millimeter uh, technique that was used on film. Uh, at the time when the, the movie was set. But no doubt uh, that you film using digital cameras and that gives you the luxury of filming a lot because it's inexpensive, inexpensive in terms of time and resources. Uh, how many hours of film have you actually filmed shot 
And how was the editing process? Have you been involved in the editing? Who decided what to keep and what to leave out? Uh, that's always a difficult process. So can you tell us a bit about editing and everything yeah. related to that? Yeah, you mentioned that it was a luxury to shoot on digital and to have a lot of takes, but it's not actually like this because uh, our time was limited and we have to finish in time everything. And in the first day of shooting, I took like, uh, oh, I don't know, 47 takes on one scene. And then, uh, yeah, the producers, uh, they were really scared that we're not going to be able to finish this in time uh, using this kind of workflow. You, you have this, uh, yeah, relaxation shooting on digital, but uh, you also work with the team. We also work with uh, a crew. So it's not like you can stay and spend all day shooting uh, or uh, whatever you it comes up to your mind so but uh, we had like uh, i don't know the hours uh, yeah i don't know how many hours in my last documentary i had like uh, 300 uh, 000 hours it wasn't the case here we edited we spent the time in, in the editing room um Starting July, August, September, we stopped in September, October, and then we worked again in December and January. I was there every time. Um, and uh, it was like a really interesting process because we left out a lot of scenes and we decided to do this because because we wanted to keep this, this uh, storyline of Anna. And we also had like a parallel plot with uh, another character and uh, also with uh, Sorin's mother. And we decided that we're not gonna in include that uh, shot shots in the, in the final edit. Uh, it was interesting. It was like a tunnel vision. We had to let it for, I don't know, two months, and then to start again, to see how it looks with um, fresh eyes. And it was, yeah, it wasn't hard, but it, I can't, I wouldn't say it was easy to do it. It was like, because we had to, to find the right balance using this, uh, having these long shots, it was really, I don't know, we, we, we really had to find the balance of telling the story and to keep, like, let's say, to imagine how the audience will be involved all the time and not to lose them at any minute, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have a question from Luisa as well. Hi, everyone. Uh, Alex, Mara, nice to meet you <laughs> on Zoom. Uh, thank you for the wonderful film. I think it was really powerful. I, I connected it with so many stories I heard from my parents. Um, they also have some, some, some terrible stories that I'm hoping at one point I'm going to bring on screen. Uh, but also, um, it felt nostalgic and warm. And uh, it, it was a, a film about youth and, and love and first love as well. So I appreciated this. Um, I have, a, I mean, I have a few questions, but yeah, I will start. <laughs> uh, I have two questions for you, Alex. First of all, I'm wondering um, how was the transition from documentary filmmaking to fiction filmmaking, narrative filmmaking? I'm also a documentary and fiction filmmaker and I use both uh mediums uh, and i combine them I, I i do also hybrid works so i'm wondering how this transition was for you and um and maybe for mara i have a question about the intimate scenes and this is also in relation to those long takes <laughs> and and many long takes how was to coordinate technical aspects of those scenes with bringing up the emotion as well uh, and i know these are challenging scenes but yeah i'm wondering if you can yeah address this and i can follow up afterwards yeah i'll be uh, really fast uh, 
as I want to let uh, Mara to answer your question. Uh, I, I have no idea. Uh, it was like an organic, a natural thing for me to do. I didn't have the feeling that I'm doing a feature film or that if, if that it's something different than a documentary. I used to make doc observational documentaries. I, uh, yeah, it, okay, I was working with actors, so with a, another schedule, with uh, 24 days of shooting, but uh, until it ended, I didn't get, I don't know, I didn't have the idea that uh, it's, I'm doing something different. I now, that, yeah, now that I feel I'm there's thinking, another kind of pressure, right? When you have yeah, to produce it wasn't a pressure. No, it wasn't a pressure no. for me. Now that I'm thinking back, okay, I might say, oh, yeah, maybe it was, I don't know, hard. I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, during the process, I was just into it and I didn't feel that it's a different thing because in the end, we are telling stories and we are, we are trying to tell these stories and it doesn't matter the way we are doing it. So... If you are just, I don't know, uh, thinking about telling this story, the everything is, I don't know, in the background. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was like a natural thing for me to do. So I let Mara to answer your question. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the question was about the technical stuff in combination with the acting. Emotional yes, in the, in the intimate scene that you had with your partner. An intimate scene. Okay, that's another question. Okay, <laughs> so uh, first question that I'll answer. I mean, this uh, is the this was the question. I was yeah, I was thinking about about, about those two. On, only the intimate scenes. You have yes, you want a specific yes. answer for that one? Okay. Yes. Be, yeah, because again, you have to combine technical aspects of yeah the choreography of the shot, and you have to hit certain marks but also to be involved in yeah bring the emotion in the intimate story. scenes you don't really want to bring emotions up to a certain extent because yeah. that would be a bit weird <laughs> to let emotion flow through you when you have your partner naked it, it's <laughs> there you have a very detached way or i i have a very detached way of seeing my work my physical work mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. And how we shot them. So it was um, it was scary for me personally because it was my first time doing this kind of shots. And in Romania, sadly, we don't work with intimacy coaches. So we don't get that sort of protection on set. And I was lucky enough that more or less the whole crew was very supportive of me and understood the 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 fact that I was frightened as a as a young female actress to perform in this sort of way without an intimacy coach, and uh, we choreograph we 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 try to I don't know if choreography is the right word we try to uh, mark some movements and um, some limits we try to do the intimacy coach part but between me and Sherban mm -hmm. and Sherban let me do most of the, the job because he understood maybe the fact that it, would, uh, it wouldn't have been fair for him to tell me now bra off, <laughs> now pants off. And um, yeah, so with Tudor and with uh, Julien, that was the, the sound, the sound mm -hmm. operator, uh, they were the only ones in the room with us. We had the closed set. And Tudor is a, and Julian are very amazing and progressive thinking men <laughs> that were very careful of the way they were shooting the scene. And Julian, for for the whole time we shot the intimate, the last intimate scene, he didn't look at us at all. He looked at us just to move the boom, and then he didn't. And Tudor again was very careful and he tried to, to adjust his camera movements 
with us so that we don't feel also the pressure of having to look where the camera is and to adjust mm -hmm. our, our, our movements with the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope that was a good enough answer. Yeah, so so it's sort of you you think about the technicality of it, uh, of course, more, and you try to, to do it as as best as possible. And of course, right. it, it, the it being having a supportive team also helps with with being open to do it. Yeah, I think I think we don't want a naturalistic ways yeah. of working in this sort yeah. of intimacy scenes because there is a lot of room for abuses and i was lucky enough not to be a victim of those but i have colleagues female actresses in romania that were very traumatized of working on these sort of sequences so yeah we have to be very careful with that i think yeah. do we have time for one more question i'm big question yeah alex i i thank you mara for telling me this. Uh, I also have a question about your uh, maybe inspirations or artists, film, other filmmakers that you feel you are in conversation with uh, in your work. Like who, who are those? Those people it's, that you... Oh, it's, it's such a hard question because I'm, I don't know, I'm... I have some influences, but I, I'm changing this, and I don't know. It's based on I don't know my, based on mood. I don't know. It's based on my life, and it's based on time. And now I have like I don't know. I'm more into uh, Scandinavian directors, and but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how, what to say. It's hard because I. I watch a lot of movies. Yes. I watch a lot of noir movies. I like, I really like old black and white noir movies. But I think I'm, I get my inspiration from music, more than music, more than movies, mm -hmm. and from books and from history. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but. I can't put a thing or on a director or... Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's yeah, why I was it's, asking it's, artists. Yeah, it's, so. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I, it's almost impossible for me to give you an answer. <laughs> yeah, but definitely I can say it's, uh, yeah, music, it's, uh, it's for me something really important in my life and maybe the, there I'm getting the inspiration from music. I mean, we can tell from the film as well <laughs> <laughs> how, so. how, how important yes. music is. Yes. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim Morrison, because that, that was a, a huge part of the film. Mary Louise, are we about at the end of the time? Um, seems like we probably have gone over, but this has been a wonderful conversation. The questions were were really great that people were asking, and that that, that prompted some fascinating talk. Um, I don't know if you want to wrap, wrap up um, or, or you want me to, but I actually had a question, if I may. Can oh, I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, uh, a comment and a question. Um, one of uh, one of the things that is uh, two things that I I think I need to note about the movie. One is you were you were talking earlier, uh, Alexandra, about the uh, about the one lady who has a uh, you know <laughs> um, always uh, talked about their you know their experience with communism and that the film resonated. I think that the film resonates with. Um, with multiple generations in in very different ways right so i didn't get to be the high schooler during communism but it, you know the movie kind of filled in the blanks for me so to speak um and then the other thing that is interesting is that um it, it's a love story right and and you're developing this love story in a way that can speak to anybody anywhere right but at the same time the twist of the love story is only possible because of the where where the movie is set, right? The historical time when the movie is set, and and both of you, uh, and I'm sure that and I've heard this as well, right? You talked about um, you know people saying 
uh, and this is where I'm going with my where I'm asking my question that uh, people have responded and said um, well, this is another communist communist movie, right? Um, so the question I'm asking is, and and they've and they've said this ever ever like the the late twenties, right? With the first batch, so to speak, of movies of, of fiction films about communism. So how would you respond? How do you respond to people who say that? And how do you defend another communist movie? Or what is the impetus? I mean. Okay, so actually we, uh, we, we, we never did, uh, we never get this uh, feedback like, this is another communist movie so it's the opposite way people realize that this is not another communist movie and we don't have to defend it but as you mentioned it is a, an universal love story and the ending or i don't know the nuances of the stories are based on some particular facts that only could happen in those times in the 70s like i don't know the concept of never when you say i'm never gonna see you again because i'm leaving the country back then never meant never it was like never but i struggled to i don't know to universalize all this story in order to make it i don't know all the people think that this is a a, a, a contemporary today story and not a story that happened know, in the 70s. So we were lucky enough not to defend this till now. And yeah, maybe we have to prepare for <laughs> this kind of questions. But no, no, we, uh, we, we don't have to, I think. Just a quick question, Alex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a quick one. Uh, what is your next project or projects? Okay. So, if, if you uh, have any, so line up now. I actually don't have enough time to sit down and I don't know, to get in the mood to write. I have two ideas. One is contemporary movie and one is set in the 20s in the 1920s so i'm developing these two stories as i don't know as i can right now and i'll decide at some point uh, in which direction i'm going to to go but it's too soon because now i'm promoting the movie i'm traveling all, around the world and i hope i don't know in December or maybe in February after the French uh, theater release to have this uh, let's say luxury to have like a few months to work and to develop these new ideas yeah but it's hard right now to find this uh, this time to hopefully work. hopefully Mara will be part of these projects in the future because she's very talented I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Okay. It sounds like she's in demand, so you'll you'll have to act fast. Exactly. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss out. Well, I I guess uh, we we probably have run over, so we should draw it to an end, yeah. So um, I don't know if anyone from the festival wants to to wrap it up, but. Um, this has really been a wonderful conversation. I, I, I love the movie, but this this um, hearing about it has also really um, filled in a lot of lot of things. So thank you all. Thank you, thank you, Alexandra and Mara for for participating so so deeply in this. Yeah, thank you for having thank us. You. And thank we, you guys. We are all 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 very grateful for you being with us here because we're uh, hungry for uh, interacting uh, with a Romanian artists. So uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you, Robert, for moderating the conversation. And for all of us, for all of you here, don't forget that the uh, online portion of the festival is still running through November 27. Thank you again to all of you. Um, <laughs>
I hope I didn't forget to thank Robert earlier. You thank me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.